to you and your uh, co-authors um, uh, have extensive coverage of financial aid in this book. Do. Uh, would you like to address that? Well, Mike McPherson, uh, one of the co-authors, is of course one of the nation's experts on financial aid. He's mm -hmm. written about it for years. Mm -hmm. And he not only describes the existing patterns, mm -hmm. but answers a very, very important question. Namely, do differences across states in the net price, the net price, the mm -hmm. sticker price right. minus grant aid and all of that, right. affect completion rates? Right. And what we find, what Mike really found, is yes, very definitely mm -hmm. among low-income kids. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. low-income students, students from low-income families, are price sensitive right. in terms of completion, not just in terms of starting out, but in terms of completion. It's, it's a really important point. Right. Whereas if you look at the relationship among high-income mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. there's none. Mm -hmm. Flat as a pancake is mm -hmm. the line. Uh -huh. And so this causes you to really ask hard questions. Right. Is the emphasis in many states on merit aid, mm -hmm. aid given without reference to financial need, right. a wise investment of funds? Right. Probably not. Probably not. Right. And is the policy of trying to keep tuition down for everybody mm -hmm. as a way of getting net price down mm -hmm. wise? Right. Probably, Probably not. not. Right. So mm -hmm. there are important things that could be done at the national level mm -hmm. that I think would raise completion rates. Mm -hmm. Do by simplifying financial, simplifying financial aid okay. and concentrating it more on the people who need it. Fair enough. Community colleges are playing a bigger uh, role in uh, federal strategy for addressing um, uh, higher education. Uh, do you and your co-authors address uh, the, the business of community college and transfer students in the book? We do, uh, at length. Yes. And the short answer is that community colleges are, of course, important and there's everything to be said for making them better. Right. But we should also understand that if a student wants a BA degree, a four-year degree, mm -hmm. and can get into a four-year college mm -hmm. to begin with, right. that's what the student should do. Right. Because the price of starting at a two-year college in terms of an ultimate completion rate for the BA mm -hmm. is high. Mm -hmm. Our data show that convincingly, and there are national data that show the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, right. let me also go on to say that four-year universities that want to improve their completion rates and improve their diversity mm -hmm. are well advised to think carefully uh, about pools of transfer applicants right. because the data also show that those students from two-year colleges who do apply to a four-year college mm -hmm. Uh, by and large do very well. For the same reason um, yeah. high school kids same who apply themselves same reason. do well. Right. Same reason. They've right. demonstrated right. Right. Uh, right. that yeah. they can uh, get it done. Right. And so I think there's a lot to be said mm -hmm. for particularly less selective universities that have any kind of transfer pool right. to think very carefully right. about taking more of those students. Those students come disproportionately from poor families right. Uh, mm -hmm. from groups that they're not enrolling, really, mm -hmm. in the numbers they should. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance to both get the overall completion rate up mm -hmm. and to improve uh, the socioeconomic profile of the university. What do you see as the great payoff uh, for the society in heeding uh, the lessons of this book? Well, the Obama administration and Ben Bernanke at the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. Uh, are all crystal clear in pointing out that the success of the U.S. economy mm -hmm. over time, the competitiveness of the U.S. economy, right. is very much a function of the human capital of the country. Right. And of course, for many years, the U.S. was unquestionably number one. Right. It's not now. Right. It's simply not true. Right. If you graph, as we do in the book, right. uh, educational attainment rates over time, they go up steadily until about the 1970s. And then they plateau. Right. And so the payoff for the country mm -hmm. is to get that curve heading up again right. so that the U.S. has the human capital it needs. And this is directly related to outcomes. Directly related to outcomes. Right. So the U.S. needs the human capital that it does not now produce right. in order to be an effective player in a world in which brain matters right. more and more right. and more. Right. 
Now, a, a big research project like this tends to produce as many questions as it does answers. More, more. More. <laughs> Can you tell us about them? Well, let me mention one specific finding that is worth some thought. And it has to do with the effect of parental education on outcomes. Okay. Everybody would believe that whether the parents had any exposure to college mm -hmm. would affect how the students do. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's correct. Mm -hmm. But the dividing line is not between some exposure to college and no exposure to college. Mm -hmm. It's between getting a degree if you're a parent or not getting a degree. Mm -hmm. the, Very the, it, it is interesting. Mm -hmm. The success of children in getting a degree mm -hmm. is very much a function of whether they have a parent who got a degree. Right. Now, one implication of that, of course, is that the benefits of raising completion rates are intergenerational. Okay. Not, not only does the person right. who gets the degree benefit, right. but that person's children right. are going to benefit. Right. So there's a kind of right. continuing impact right. that I think most people didn't realize. Uh, we didn't uh, before, but it's powerful and again, across all of uh, the data. So that's just one example of a phenomenon mm -hmm. that we now understand much better. Right. And it just speaks again to the importance of mm -hmm. getting attainment rates up. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, this has been uh, in itself an educational uh, interview. Uh, we appreciate uh, your, your coming by and we look forward to publication of this book uh, early, early fall. Good. There is so much um, information in the book right. that I hope other people interested in the subject and interested in helping the United States do better right. will take advantage of the leads and the opportunities to do other work right. better. There. Clearly there's a broad gauge mess message in this book both for the stakeholders in higher education themselves and also for uh, others concerned with the um, ongoing good fortune of the United States. Yeah. Policymakers in Washington, the timing, the timing Peter could not be better. We're very fortunate. Okay. Thank you very much.